Junior Thompson. I'm a senior at Piedmont International University where I'm about to graduate with a degree in Biblical Studies. I also am the senior pastor of New Beginnings Christian Fellowship here in Jacksonville. Today I want to talk with you about the premillennial view. In modern Christianity, there are three different views on the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Of those views, premillennialism is the most plausible view and is more in line with Scripture than any of the other views presented in modern Christianity today. It is the purpose of this speech to identify these three views, to give a definition of each view, and to give evidence to support the most plausible view, which is premillennialism. The millennial reign of Christ will occur at his second coming. This is where he will defeat his enemies at the Battle of Armageddon, and he will establish a theocratic rule over the earth for a literal thousand years, as stated in Revelation chapter 19 and 20. This thousand year reign is not to be confused with the rapture of the church, for they are two separate phenomena. These three major views are held by most biblical scholars and covenant theologians. These views are premillennialism, as I've mentioned earlier, postmillennialism, and amillennialism or amillennialism. There is a common view in Christianity that Christ will reign. However, the question is, when will this reign occur? This is what these three views are designed to cover. We will start by exploring and defining these three major views of the millennial reign and provide evidence of the most correct view. Definitions of these three, three views greatly differ. However, only one view, which is premillennialism, is biblically sound. Premillennialism is defined as the view that holds that the second coming of Christ will occur prior to the millennium. And this will also see the establishment of Christ's kingdom on earth for a literal 1,000 year reign. This is according to Charles Ryrie. Postmillennialism is defined as the idea that Jesus Christ will return after the millennium, according to Paul Benware. Amillennialism is defined as those who believe that this present age is fulfilling the millennial reign on earth through the church. This is from Dwight Pentecost in his book, Things to Come. Evidence provided by theologians and scholars, along with scripture, supports my belief of premillennialism. According to Charles Wiry, graduate of Dallas Theological Cemetery, uh, Seminary and one of the greatest theologians of our time, he states that premillennialists believe in the inerrancy of Scripture without exception. Believing that Scripture is without error, one must turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, where it announces the second coming of Christ. This is prior to the millennium that is spoken of in Revelation chapter 20. There's also covenant issues that must be dealt with. All the Old Testament covenants were given to Abraham, and they must be fulfilled by him or his descendants, which is Israel. The church, or this current age, cannot fulfill these promises spiritually or by substitution. So if the word is inerrant, they cannot be fulfilled by the church. They must be fulfilled by Israel. The premillennial view allows for these promises to be fulfilled during the tribulation, thus looking to a literal interpretation of God's word. Biblical postmillennialism is the belief that Christ will return after the millennium. With this view, one would have to say that the church is fulfilling the promises of the Abrahamic covenant. According to Ben Ware, who is an expert in end times prophecies, he says that postmillennialists believe that the church, which is working under the power of the Holy Spirit, will ultimately change the world to the point that Christ will return. This view was developed in early, the early 8th and 9th centuries. The elements for the postmillennial view are Christ will return after the millennium, and the millennium is an undetermined amount of time. It also claims that the kingdom of Christ is a spiritual kingdom, not a literal kingdom, and that the spreading of the gospel equals a better world. To refute the elements of postmillennialism, 
One just needs to look to the Bible. In Genesis chapter 12, God made his covenants with Abraham and his descendants, not the church. And these covenants must be fulfilled by the Jews and not the church. The Bible clearly states in Revelation 19 and 20 that Christ will return prior to the millennium. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 speaks of a literal, not a spiritual kingdom. In Revelation 19 and 20, the Apostle John says six times that the millennial reign will be for 1,000 years. Therefore, having a set amount of time, this contradicts the post millennials view. Amillennialism is defined as those who believe that the present age is fulfilling the millennial reign on earth through the church. That's according to the white Pentecost again. According to Pentecost, amillennialism has had a rise in popularity in the last few decades. And this is due to the collapse of postmillennialism. This is very similar to postmillennialism or better stated as Pentecost puts it, puts it it's it's a refined view of post-millennialism. This view appeals to many as a spiritual interpretation of Scripture rather than a literal interpretation of Scripture. The elements of amillennialism are the second coming of Christ is a singular event. There is no distinction between the second coming and the rapture of the church. There is no distinction in judgments. Amillennialists believe in one general judgment of mankind. Amillennialists believe there is no distinction between the church and Israel, that the church is spiritually fulfilling the covenant promises that were given to Israel in the Old Testament. To refute these claims, again, one has to go no farther than the Bible. Scripture clearly states in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that the rapture, the rapture of the church is separate from the great white throne judgment in chapter 20. There is a resurrection to life in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And there is a resurrection to damnation in Revelation chapter 20. These are separate in scripture and they are also separate in time. The third element of amillennialism was refuted with postmillennialism. The church cannot be spiritual Israel and fulfill the covenant promises of the Old Testament. The word covenant by definition per the Bible dictionary and concordance is a word expressing God's gracious purpose toward his people and also the relation into which they are thereby brought to him. With examining these millennial views, the evidence is clear. And in conclusion, with the testimony of these scholars and the support of scripture, it's clear that a premillennial view is more in line with the Bible and it carries with it more of a constant flow through Scripture. Premillennialism answers more questions where the other views create more questions. In order to be doctrinally sound, one must believe the entire Word of God, thus making premillennialism the only correct view. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed in rightly dividing the word of truth. As Christians, we have an obligation to the truth that is God's word. We must educate ourselves and we must educate each other so that our views coincide with the views of Scripture. Premillennialism is my view. And with the evidence in the Scripture presented here today, it is my hope that it will be your view as well. Thank you very much.